repeat with the music next Perfect. door. <laughs> but you can hear me better now. Yes. Okay. Yes. You see? We're singing? This is great. So, um, welcome. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Now, I need to know who's in the room, because I think we have a variety of folks. So, um, before we jump in, raise your hand if you are, and you can raise your hand more than once, um, here for your chorus. Your quartet. Okay. Your committee. Okay. The leadership 13 cohort. Great. Something else? Yes. Just before you. You've been in this room all morning. <laughs> Um, so just a little bit about me. I, uh, uh, um, former, I'm retired now, but I was for 40 years a career and life transition counselor. So I help people through transitions. I help organizations through transitions, and that's why I guess I got added to the faculty <laughs> um, because choruses go through transitions. I helped my chorus go through transition from Lakeside to Acapella Shore. And that was a hard one. And transitions are not easy, and they're not quick. And I just want to be able to share some of that with you. I also, Cherie told me I have to tell you that I did write a book. It's <laughs> available on Amazon, only one left. <laughs> 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 Four six of them purchased it last week. <laughs> it is uh, called um, The Time Between Dreams. Mm. How to navigate uncertainty in your life and career. So it's it's a, a cyclical way of looking at life, not just this linear. We gotta start here and just climb the mountain or climb the ladder and get somewhere and just arrive and stay there forever. And that doesn't happen. Are you serious? It's not available on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> it is available. Oh, okay. It said it was only one left, but there's some used versions. I wasn't gonna. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, I, I started and founded and ran a nonprofit organization for 25 years during those 40 years. So I know a little bit about nonprofits and how they work and how we have to change and be agile along the way. Okay, so before we get started, I'd like to just set um, a metaphor for you, right? We were, um, the handout I gave you, You, I want you to use one focus on it. So what's your major focus for being here? If it's the leadership cohort, or if it's your, your chorus, or your committee, that's what I want you to imagine. Because if we mix them all up, it's gonna be really complicated, and it isn't gonna work. So just, just pick one of those. And the handout I gave you, it's also, I have a, QR code at the end, so you can get the handouts on the slides, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and jotting down the ideas for this, the, I, as I said, I, I look at things cyclically, where sometimes they're growing and launching and really taking off, and sometimes they're not. And how do we travel that? One image I'd like to use with you today is the image of a tree where we're gonna be talking about vision, mission, and values. And those are the different parts of the tree. It's a tree is an organic thing, right? It grows, it changes, it breathes, and it has, um, it needs nurturing, it needs pruning, it needs watering, it needs a lot of things, and as do our vision, mission, and values along the way. Um, Looking around, I know you're already leaders in this. This is not, why is that making all that noise? Hang on, hang on. I don't like that noise. Put a few down here. Is that better? Yeah. Is that better? Good. Um, so you're all leaders, and I don't want to stand up here and talk at you for the next however many minutes we have. I really would love to have participation, to have your ideas, your thoughts, um, your questions and anything else that just 
customize. Feel free to, to express that here or jot it down for yourself and we can talk about it afterwards. Uh, okay, so our goals. Where did I put that? Um, our goals for today is the vision. So the vision are the leaves and the branches that reach out and people can see and be attracted to the fruit that's there and everything else. And we're going to talk about what is a vision and how essential is it in the life of an organization and the longevity of any organization. And then there's mission. And mission, we're going to talk about the differences between vision and mission and what's the role that mission plays. And then values. What are your core values, guiding principles, and what role do they play in any group? So whether we're talking about chorus or quartet or committee, this is part of it. Any group that we get together with, we need to know these things. And that, the fourth thing is understanding that these three things, vision, mission, values, they have to be defined before you step out there to do anything. Because you can't create an, um, an effective strategic plan if you don't know what the, the, um, the roots are. <laughs> or what the tree is and what the leaves are doing. You need to have all three a part of the next steps that you take. As we go on, I think you'll find that the group that you're here to pay attention to will fall into one of three categories. So here's the first one. Those who have already done the work and have effective and a, and a vibrant vision for the future, right? There's gonna be that. So you in that number one vision and mission statement. The second um, group might be those who realize it's time to really start this work. Because you've been going and you've got some pieces, but you don't have all the pieces yet. And the third group um, is uh, those who fall in the middle, so who realize, well, yeah, oh no, I'm sorry, I just said the second one. I made a mistake there. Okay, <laughs> so the second one is you have no clue. <laughs> and you're starting from scratch. And the third one is, you've got some clues, but you haven't put it all together. So in the back of your mind, as we go through this, figure out which category you're in. I like quotes. So I use them a lot. And in the book, I have them all in the, in the margins. Because, I don't know, I just find them inspiring. What can I say? Um, and so here's one from Steve Jobs, which I'm not sure about Steve Jobs, but I do use Apple products. But he says, if you're working on something exciting that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you, right? So what I'd like to do is pass these around, take one. Do you recognize these from this morning? So I'd like you to write down on this one thing that other than music and singing that you love, that you're passionate about, okay? Just one thing. You have the one paper. Did, there's some in the there's what some. was it? Yeah, you're going to write down one thing aside from things that people know about you. So we're not going to write down singing for, oh. yeah, yeah, we know that. But something that people don't know that you're really passionate about. Just one thing. Write it big if you can. I'm doing good at writing. You have to write. <laughs> yeah, with your left hand. <laughs> <laughs> I can read it from here, so you need to get it. Hey, oops. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do, you have paper over here. There they go. I want you to get up and I want you to sort of hold up your piece of paper and find somebody else with the same interests and talk about it.
So a lot of energy, a lot of joy around this. Yeah, it was. I couldn't get you back together. So, <laughs> so what else? It's possible to get your way toward common ground with people in such a short time. Yeah, me too. Right. I didn't hear about that. That's um, it's it, it's so easy and it's a, it takes a short time to get. Say it again. It's yes. possible to get to a common ground with people if you really mean to, if you set out with the intention to find it. Uh, yes. If you want to, you can find it. What else? I love seeing the light come up on mm. in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, really and the it. passion yeah. around the things that they were involved in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The energy shifted. Yes. The energy really the energy shifted. shifted. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't want to stop. Didn't want to stop. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Intuitively, did you pick up anything that you were um, noticing? That something maybe that the person didn't say, but but you just had a sense of this about them. Yeah, that they love what they do. That they love, yeah, they love what they were doing and the interest that they had. Yeah, great. So that one was a sort of icebreaker to get you. Meeting each other, and <laughs> and um, what I'd like to do next is talk about vision, right? So, what is a vision? I'm going to board this to see what you think. I'm not going to tell you what I think yet. So, <laughs> what's a vision? Where do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> And it's not just as necessarily where you want to go, it's the, the timeline you want to get there. Mm -hmm. Is it a short-term goal? Is it a long-term vision? There's there's visions within visions, so. Uh, is it the same thing as a goal? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Goals? How do you see it? Your vision? Your vision? Mm -hmm. How do you see yourself in the future? Uh-huh. How do you see yourself? about the dream that you're passionate about. Something that both pulls you and you're willing to work toward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? Kind of um, even if not a specific goal but a way of being. If that makes sense, like how you want to be. Why? 
Why do you exist? Why are you singing together? Why is this committee together? What's the purpose, right? And it's behind, it's the reason behind all of our choices. It provides a sense of purpose and direction. I, I like this really big things do. It helps guide our short and long-term goals in each decision we make. So it isn't a goal, but it guides it. It's the the flow, the water underneath. It helps us get there. Yes. It's expansive, aspirational, and inspirational. It's big. It's unique. So, so often when I look at the visions of different choruses in Sweet Adeline, some of them, a bunch of them, sound exactly the same. And I'm like, well, what is this chorus isn't like that chorus. You know, this, this chorus has a certain personality, but I'm not hearing it in the vision. You know, that it's just sort of blowing out. So it's unique and specific to this one particular group, and it's specific. <laughs> that you want to be able to use the right words to describe where you're going and how you're going to get, not how you're going to get there, but what drives you to get there. It draws out others' curiosity and makes them interested. They want to know more when they hear it. it. It's just like it draws them in. It's a magnet. And it's one sentence. <laughs> Hardest sentence to write sometimes, <laughs> especially when you're not in the in the right frame of mind to write one. Um, and that you shouldn't take that as a I can't do this. It really is a sign and an indication. It might not be time to do this because we don't have the energy to be able to create a vision. It's big. It's really big. So what does it sound like? Here are some examples. Uh, who do we have first? Oh, and could you, okay, I'll do that later. So Habitat for Humanity. You all know Habitat for Humanity. A world where everyone has a decent place to live. Now, is that ever going to happen? We like to hope so, but that is a big vision where everyone has a decent place to live. Uh, this is my dentist. Imagine a lifetime of dazzling, healthy style. <laughs> He's a barber shopper, too. <laughs> He's good. I like him. <laughs> and I have a dentist phobia, so that it, it makes a lot of sense. Goodwill says, new lives start here. Ooh, these are huge. Unattainable, maybe, even. Beyond what we think we can do. That's why it's not a goal. Because goals you can meet. Visions, they're out there. Inspiring and empowering voices to joyfully harmonize the world. That's Sweet Adeline vision. They came up with really good vision, mission, and value statements in their last, when was that, two years ago? Yeah, something like that. Um, Riser puts it in their logo, their vision, where kids find healing and hope. So, and then of course I have to say, acapella joy, that's our vision. People hear acapella joy, they want that. Yeah, so that's, we don't need to have a big vision because it, we came up with, when we came up with this name, um, it was back in 2003, and we all came together and had lots of different ideas for what the name might be, and uh, we put them all up. We didn't know whose was whose, like we didn't tie it to a certain person. And when we um, landed on Acapella Joy, and we all said yes, and we registered it with Sweet Adeline, they went, no, that, that's the name of a quartet. That's not a name of a chorus. What? What? Yeah. what? Because back then, we were the first ones to ever take a name and talk about what we do <laughs> with that name. Uh. Most choruses talk about the place they are, the location. 
we didn't want to do that. We didn't know what to do with that stuff. <laughs> um, so what do you think? Some of these examples. What does it what does it bring up as you're listening to some of these? They're very aspirational. Yeah. Like they're inspired. Yeah, they make you smile. Mm -hmm. Yes, they make you smile. They attract people because it's like, ooh, tell me more, right? It, it piques their interest. So, uh, that's that one. Okay. So, who develops the vision? So, Well, in the chorus, if you don't have a vision, it's really good to get everybody involved because you want that input, you want everybody to buy in to the direction that you're moving in and have everybody say, yes, this is, this is who we are, this is where we want to go. If it's a big organization, they don't do that. <laughs> the, it's usually just the um, management teams, you know, and they get together and then they, everybody else who was in that organization just have to accept it or leave because they don't agree with it. Well, that's true for a school district too. If it's already defined, it's important for people who are coming in to the organization or the chorus to know what it is. So they know, they can evaluate for themselves whether this is a good fit for them or not. That's why it's so important, not just in, we heard earlier this morning, um, about writing grants, <laughs> um, and you need to have your vision and vision statements, but it's important because it gives people a sense of, do I want to be there? Am I attracted to this? Is this something that's exciting? So, um, Lily Tomlin once said, I always wanted to be somebody. I guess I should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> so these are specific, but they're aspirational at the same time. See how that, that works together. Good. So just to um, summarize this thing about vision, and are there questions about vision that you have? I think you get this, what it looks like, what it sounds like. Um, it's the branches and the leaves, right? And I put hearts on there too <laughs> because it has to have heart behind it. Um, it's it's what draws people in. It makes them want to know more, and it makes them want to be a part of you. Okay. So what's a mission? I'm gonna take this one too. So Alice Walker, you know Alice Walker, she wrote the Color Purple, and she was an activist and, and all. Look closely at the present you are, you are constructing. It should look like the future you are dreaming. Yeah, so you've got the vision, that's the dream. And now, you got to make sure that what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis supports that dream and ties in and is not so far off that they are disconnected, right? So what do you think a vision is? A mission, sorry, a mission is. What's a mission? To have on how you get to your vision.
mission answers the why, <coughs> and the um, mission answers the how. Oh, okay. How are you going to get there? <laughs> what are those steps that are, you know, what's important, and how do you evaluate things along the way? So, um, the, mission, the mission is, what do you need to be doing? You know, what, how would you define what you're doing towards, um, and you'll see this on the, sh the sheet of paper that I gave you, what satisfying impact that has to serve, and what's the context that the above needs in order for you to thrive. So those are three important things. There's also um, a sense of qualities of a good mission. When I was uh, running the nonprofit, our mission statement, our mission statement, not the vision statement, but the mission statement, won an award. It was like, we won an award for our, the best vision, mission statement. And these are the qualities that they said it had. It's vivid, no wasted words. It's infused with passion and purpose, specificity and breadth, clarity and ambition. Sounds like, you know, these are really opposite things. How do you do that in one? statement because you have to make it sustain sustain succinct <laughs> succinct sorry it captures inspirational results tangibly it leaves little or everything to the imagination okay here's the, the here's the um, mission statement that won offering lifelong tools to navigate uncertainty build meaningful careers and design courageous lives that's what we do Every program we develop <laughs> fell under that. Everything we um, provided to our clients was all around giving them lifelong tools, not telling them where to go or what to do or what job is out there. It was teaching them to listen to themselves, to understand their <coughs> own wisdom, and be able to take those steps. What do you think? Is this getting any clearer? Like mud? <laughs> Here's some examples. Maybe the examples will help. Who do we have first? Habitat again. We build strength, stability, and self-reliance through shelter. So they're not just putting up buildings. It says right there that they are working with people and building, helping build their homes for them so that they can have strength, stability, and self-reliance. Goodwill, that long arm one, works to enhance people's dignity and quality of life by strengthening their communities, eliminating barriers to opportunity, and helping them reach their full potential through learning and the power of work. Long one but it describes what Goodwill does. And Sweet Adeline does a great one, elevating women singers worldwide through education, performance, and competition in barbershop harmony and acapella music. Good, right? Work. What do you think? When you see these examples, what comes up for you? It's hard to stay away from the esoteric. I, I think of the <laughs> Sweet Adelines International elevating is a little bit esoteric. That's a risky mm -hmm. word to use. Mm -hmm. It's not as concrete as it could be. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they decided to use that word. It's still aspirational. I think it fits. Yeah. It's closer to a vision idea mm -hmm. than a mission idea to me. Mm -hmm. What else? What else are you struck by? more about that because if you're going to s support an organization or even read an article about the organization if habitat's you know mission statement was you know we give you know boxes to people to live in um that's not going to inspire you and you're not going to have much trust in that right but we build strength stability and self-reliance through shelter says so much more than putting somebody in in even the nicest box around. You know, mm -hmm. it says so much more than that. And so my instinct is is to trust that. Yeah. 
Habitat for Humanity could just say, we build houses for people who don't have them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would be a fairly accurate statement. But this is like, but we're doing that in order so that they have strength, stability, and self-reliance. Mm -hmm. And so, w which shows that like, it's not just the physical thing we're providing, but we're also providing these more intangible benefits through that tangible thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think that all of them do that, including the elevating women. It's like we're doing these tangible things, the performances, the competition and things, in order to achieve this intangible goal. Right. Yeah, yeah we're doing it with so much more. Yes. Such an impact. Mm -hmm. And that there's not just one way that each of these things could actually look like in the world. formulating what I'm what I'm wanting to say I like how there's three different verb forms in those three and I think the one that I like the best is habitat because there's there's somebody doing the work we build it sounds a, a little bit more of a sounds like a little bit more of a commitment than kind of the amorphous works to enhance people or elevating women I just I think I like the one that's a little more taking responsibility and more community feeling that's for sure yeah, yeah. more community feeling mm -hmm. yeah and you'll it, um, wordsmith along the way mm -hmm. when you're developing your mission statement because it's not just the big why why we exist but it's Okay, so how are we going to get to that why? And what things do we need to put in place? But it isn't the specific, specific programs, although we definitely says a little bit about that and goodwill too, about the specific things they're gonna do. Um, because that's really what they do. <laughs> yes. I, I can read Alaska Staff Celebrations. Yeah. It says, uh, we are an Alaska a cappella women's chorus dedicated to enriching our community and ourselves by sharing and promoting the joy and craft of barbershop singing. That's great. And that, is that your mission or your vision? That's our mission. Your mission. What's your vision? We actually don't have a vision. We have everything. Well, our, our, we have transforming lives one one song at a time. Mm -hmm. So that's more of our tagline. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a true vision statement. So that's something I've got already written down. Well, that's not a bad vision statement. Well, it actually, you know, because it does cover it. Yeah. It's but yeah. Like but. If it doesn't feel like, oh, I can say this is our vision, then right. there's something that needs to That's be That's not our official one, put it that way. <laughs> yes, Debra. All of these feel very foundational and long-term. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Stable. Yes. Um, that it is the base upon <coughs> which everything else is going to build. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Anybody else have vision or mission statements they want to share that they know about for, for their own chorus? I actually did some <coughs> research on the choruses and of the people who are in the leadership cohort. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just did a little <coughs> looking to see, you know, how clear things were and how um, how much they needed to be worked. Um, and I'm not going to tell you which ones are which, but there, there are some of them are really great, absolutely great, and then some of them are needing some attention. 
because if you can um, see a vision or a mission statement and say, oh, that could be anybody or any chorus out there, then it's not enough. It has to be unique to your group. And every one of our groups is different. It has a different personality. So how do we capture that personality in these words? You know, these are like black and white words that are very tangible, but we need to somehow embrace that sense of possibility in all of these words. Yeah. But if you want to know which ones I like, you can ask me later. <laughs> okay, where are we? So the mission. <laughs> <laughs> Just to summarize the mission a little bit. It's it's the trunk of the tree, you know. And you'll notice I put hearts on each of these pieces. There's a heart in the bit in the values. There's a heart in the mission. There's a heart in the vision. Because it has to come from the heart. It can't just be a head thing, you know. Or finding the words. Yeah. Let's get to the underneath it. What does it really mean? And the trunk is where the values come from in order to be able to have the vision out there in the world, right? So it's an important part of the tree. It's the stability. What else do you think of when you think of the trunk of a tree? History. History. How many rings? Mm, how old, right? There's some, is your chorus a sapling? <laughs> or is it, you know, a redwood? Yeah, base. Yeah. It, all the nutrients go through the mission, right? Into the leaves so that they can grow and the fruit can, can branch out. So um, values are the roots. And I, this is a long quote, but I really like it from Mahatma Gandhi. Carefully watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Manage and watch your words, for they will become your actions. Consider and judge your actions, for they have become your habits. Acknowledge and watch your habits, for they shall become your values. This is the real part of it, though. Understand and embrace your values, for they become your destiny. Wow. <laughs> so values, what? Let's, let's do a little different now. Just turn to the person next to you and talk about values. What do you think values are? <laughs> I mean, I can do this though. Yeah, like I was going to say honesty and, uh, and like, uh, like generosity or, you know, uh, and some of the things that people were writing on their list were like family or, uh, you know, things like that. So, so it's almost like. It's like things that we hold as important. Things that we value. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. That's a circular definition. Yeah. Like, um, like, yeah. Things that we aspire to. Yeah. Things that we aspire to. Like qualities that we aspire to um, embody. Or, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
sense of it. Yeah, it's making decisions like if you're confronted with an issue and you have to make a choice between am I going to be honest about this or am I going to be honest and it's like well honesty is one of my core values so um, I need to you know uh, I need to say that I made a mistake or whatever uh, you know or um, I need to apologize to this person because you know like, this aligns with my core values so they got they guide your behavior mm -hmm. I do yeah, I like that I do yeah I do I do I do I do yeah, I like that much. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, is ovation? Uh, uh, no, ovation. Well, ovation is kind of like a, 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 a when you won a regional, then you get invited to kind of like the regional champions alumni kind of group. So it's sort of like the coronet club for queens, except on a regional level. <laughs> and each region has their own name for it and their own um, kind of traditions and things. Like I actually won in region 26, and so their group there is called the Winner's Circle. Yes, where you so, uh, Original. Well, not original. Originally, I was in uh, Calgary, Canada, but I've lived in a bunch of different places now. My husband's American, and so we live in the Vancouver area for a while and then he got a job in Everett so we moved to Marysville okay. next to Everett um, and so, so now I sing with Voices Northwest in this region and then I still sing with Lionsgate in Vancouver thank you our daughter is married to a Canadian she's now coming home as well and they live in BC they live on the Canadian I was going to say that she's coming she used to in, in, uh, in Vancouver, they moved away um, just after yeah. COVID. Yeah, I was going to say it's a little bit more of a drive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's 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 a hard enough for me to be like it's a two and a half hour drive there and then two and a half hours back. So it's like a full work day to oh, yeah. go <laughs> to Corinth. So. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. And part of the reason, like, when my husband was job hunting, um, I was like, if you could find somewhere close enough to Lionsgate, that would be great. Oh, yeah. Because I don't want to lose them. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh, we're, like, on the camera here. Oh. They're probably listening. Well, it's being recorded, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's... It's fun, and, uh, and I, uh, um, I'm enjoying the experience of the whole region and getting to know people and uh, uh, like having both the small forest experience and the large forest experience. How many are lines Just around 100. I'm not sure exactly where we are right now, but we usually kind of cover the rest. I think we're like 25. Yeah, like uh, the Lionsgate, uh, their music and management team is would be a larger chorus than the Coast of Yeah. yeah. What chorus do you sing with? Uh, Helen of Trust. Yeah. I forget exactly what that is. Mont Helen. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably know where Calgary is because we're like straight north. Yeah, we'll be going there next June, taking our two Canadian grandkids on a trip. Yeah, I love the prairies. Yeah, so I have fond memories of going to Montana as well. So it's beautiful. Yeah, we've only been there four years. Where were you before that? Uh, we were both from New England, so we lived there, but we moved away from New England. We were in Connecticut, New Hampshire, close to Connecticut, and then hit the road in uh, fifth grade for two years and traveled the country. And then with COVID hit, we ended up traveling all the Traveling the world and uh, RV, I think, sounds like it's like a dream. Yeah, 
I would love to do that someday. I've always wanted, I've always wanted to go and explore the East Coast because I've always been like a Western person. So I, I've been to Boston and we did live, live briefly in Washington D.C. Like the well, Tech Money in Maryland, yep. D.C. And, uh, and but I really haven't. Visited the East Coast very much, so I'd love to go. Ideals that guide your behavior. a little while to go from just listing values mm -hmm. to be like well but what are values like how like rather than just saying like honesty or something like but what is honesty as a concept mm -hmm. so in that sense like we knew what it was but putting it into words was hard mm -hmm. right. and I, I think we, we actually Oh, <laughs> 
I eat it so I just sleep. It just lets us sleep. Yeah, you're already next. So, what are core values? It answers the question, um, really, basically, how will we behave, right? So, these are your groups I call non negotiables. Like, this is how we treat each other, this is how we communicate, this is how we settle things, this is this is who we are. So it starts with a label, usually a value as a noun. So those some of those that I don't remember your name back there, and she just Allison? Allison. Yeah. That um, you just said you can name values, right? So you start with the noun, you start with the name of it, and then in an introductory verb in the present tense, like we are, we believe in. So we believe in <coughs> what's one of your values? Excellent. Excellent. And then the behavior you wish to see around that. We believe in excellence by <coughs> evidence by or it looks like this in your chorus, in your quartet, whatever, and in your committee. This is what we want to see. So there's other um, items to inc also include, like how do we interact with each other? What are our values around that? How do we manage and resolve conflicts? Because there, people are together, there will be conflicts. <laughs> How do you deal with them? A lot of times when a, a group is not working very productively, they don't talk about it. They don't talk about the conflicts. And they just sort of try to put them under the rug and sweep them away for a while, and so I don't have to confront that. But we, we need to know coming into the situation, this is how, when we have conflict, <coughs> this is how we're gonna manage that. So what values are unique to us? And um, so one of the values that we have at Joy is um, to take, uh, what is it, how would you put it? A, um, a, a well-established American art form and make it fun and new. Right? It's something like that. That's not the exact words. But that's what that's one of our values that we we do all the time. And as you can see in some of the stuff that we, you know, put on stage. Wait till you see Kansas City. We just got the last piece of music like two weeks ago. Oh my <laughs> so, gosh. Yeah, what? it's um, yeah. there are five pieces in it, so 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, wow. So, and what, ca what values guide us forward, right? What is important to us? So, you know, we have, we, it's interesting because we're, we're talking about it again in our chorus because we established values and a mission and a vision back, well, the vision was before and the mission was before it became a joy even. It was when we were going through that whole cycle of what's Lakeside? You know? <laughs> what, what are we all about? And what did we want to keep from the old chorus? Those things that were really important to us. And what did we want to discard because we really didn't like those things anymore? And um, what other things did we want to add in that were new and different and fun and, you know, colorful? So th there's. Um, those things are pretty set, and when we did our values in 2004, it reiterated all the things we had come up with before. So we were really happy about that. Everybody who was there knew what they were and articulated them, and I just looked at ours again and said, you know, we might need to revisit some of these because they're not on the website and they're not, you know, we don't have them out there. And um, so I talked to the board about it and you know, put something together, and they're like, okay, we're gonna talk about this. Can you we get done with Kansas City, <laughs> and, um, and we're going to revisit that and get everybody involved and talk about it. So it isn't just something that is static. You know, none of these things are static. They have to grow with the organization, with the course, as the course changes and grows. So they need to be revisited every so often, and they need to be um, spoken to and given to people who are joining us. They need to know this is who we are. Oh, I want to be there, right? Yep. 
Okay, here's some examples. Um, Sweet Adeline's, again, did a really good job of um, these. They, there are descriptions after the major category. This is their noun, right? Musical excellence. But then they say, we honor and embrace artistry, education, and innovation in the performance of women's a cappella music while championing, championing the barbershop style. So that's one value. Another value is culture of belonging. We create harmony where every voice matters. We foster a culture that provides a joyful place to share our uniqueness within a global community united in song. Nice value. Um, diversity and inclusion. We celebrate our differences as essential to the rich harmony that unites us. As we recognize barbershops African American or origins and learn from our exclusionary past toward women of color, we reject discrimination and unwaveringly why can't I talk today? <laughs> unwavering waveringly strive toward greater awareness, openness, and understanding of each other. Hmm. Right. That was a little bit longer one, but it needed to be. Personal empowerment and leadership is another value. We encourage and empower everyone to lead from where they stand. We foster individual skills, nurture personal growth, and provide education and mentoring to develop strong, effective leaders on and off the stage. And the final one is outreach. We build strong connections by sharing our love of barbershop harmony throughout our communities, countries, and the world. That's really sweet that one, right? Yep. That's pretty good. They do a good job on it. Yeah, quite an organization. <laughs> now, ha have a pet for humanity. They say demonstrates the love of Jesus Christ because they're a religious organization, but not proselytize. <laughs> they say that right in their pictures. They're not trying to convert anybody, but they want to show, demonstrate, um, in how they behave to others in a Christian way. Focus on shelter. Advocate for affordable housing promote dignity and hope, and support sustainable and transformative development. And I'm sure they have more description under that, those things. But you see that, so what are you stuck by when you see these examples? Did it change anything in terms of how you perceive values or the importance of values? No, but it's the foundation of, yeah, it's, 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 it's that foundation. It's the roots. It's the roots. <laughs> it's the roots. And the roots have a heart, too. <laughs> the one from the habitat sounds more like mission, though, because mm -hmm. of all those verbs. Mm -hmm. um, well, there are verbs in these values. But, okay. yeah. I think if we go back to, let me see if I can find their mission. We build strength, stability, and self-reliance through shelter, is their mission. And this is how they behave in terms of making that mission real mm -hmm. and the vision real. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there are going to be verbs in there too. Anything? Any other reactions? I'm just thinking about like number three, where it says advocate for affordable housing. I mean, you could reword that and you could put a key word like advocacy and right. then a description mm -hmm. that focuses on yes. affordable housing. Yes. So that's a, just a different style right. of mm -hmm. presenting, right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's no formula for these things. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a really good point because I would probably do that too advocacy. And then. <coughs> you know, the first one is how they treat people, so personal interactions and, and uh, respect. Okay, how much time do we have? How, wait, how? I think it's 4.15. Yeah, it's we were at 4.15? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Yes. Nine okay. Minutes. Uh, we're not going to be able to do the next part. So, it was, it was, no, it was, um, 
if we have time, I'd like to do this, but we don't have time. So we're just gonna go on to the next part. What we're gonna do, what I was gonna do with you is, um, so breaking you into four groups, and I was going to um, how, you know, explore how do we behave in choruses, for instance, around as members, right, as leaders, um, regarding music and in the community, and have the, each group, and um, I think the, the leadership cohort might want to do this on their own, which is, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to go back. up with values around those categories because um, the way that we deal with our members is different than the way that we deal with our community maybe or the way that we work with our director or our leadership team and there may be different um, items to look at as we're exploring those different areas sorry this is my <laughs> and me. I love technology, but it doesn't really <laughs> bug me. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we can look at things like um, the, uh, you know, how do we de deal with conflict and how do we treat each other? And then as leaders, how do we, how do we lead? How do we um, allow the organization to move forward with us as leaders and what are those how do we behave as leaders how do we behave regarding even music like picking what kind of music and um, what's your style and there was a when I was exploring way way back in 1990 something um, Sweet Adeline there were different courses there's so many courses that must be out there right they had different personalities and um, there was one that just didn't fit well enough. All of them didn't fit me, but for different reasons. And I found that one was I had a different kind of sense of humor than they had. It was really fascinating to me. I didn't, and I, it wasn't until later on I realized in looking back that that wouldn't have been a comfort for me because of their style and, and the way that they you know, portrayed themselves. It just wasn't me. So. Yeah, just so we can look at those kinds of qualities. Um, and how do we want to be out there in the community? What is, do we want to be out there in the community? Do we want to have any connection? How do we um, build bridges with the other places you know, out there that are important to us? So all of those can have values to them, and we're going to get together and do that. But more, a couple more quotes. He's a Dutch speaker and writer. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower, <laughs> right? So we create environments for our singers. Um, we know that this is, and sometimes somebody comes in and they don't fit in, I mean, that, that um, soil we're trying to put them in, they wouldn't grow in. It wouldn't be a good fit for them. And so um, they're someplace else. The beauty of having other groups in our area that we can send them to and say, "Oh, this is a better kind of fit for you." And there's an African proverb says, "When the roots are deep, there's no reason to fear the wind." Because <laughs> that that's that's you know what we're planted in, and from that, that's what we can you know grow from. And again, using the tree as a metaphor. I is a an interesting approach there you know the roots of the tree do so many things they anchor us in our shared beliefs they um, they tell us what how people should behave towards each other and what's what's okay and what's not okay they feed the mission and the bat and the vision and without them you know we don't have a tree and something that's not really alive. Yeah. So they guide all of our decision making. So in the next four minutes, <laughs> I just want to touch on 
um, strategic planning, but we're not going to talk about like how to do strategic planning. Just want to, because we were talking about goals before, right? And how how does that happen? So this answers the question: How are we going to achieve our vision, mission, and values? And um, you know, Ken and David Thoreau said, "If you build castles in the air, uh, your work need not be lost. That's where they should be. Now put the foundations under them." And that's what strategic planning is. It's, it's trying to figure out how these, these um, this vision, mission, and values are going to look like. So we choose goals and objectives, but they have to be doable and they have to align with our, our mission and our vision. And because they're doable and um, our goals and objectives, we can track our progress because they're, they're measurable. So we create quantifiable measurements to evaluate our progress and identify best how to allocate people, money, and resources. So we're, we're going to use that, but I'm not going to talk that book today because that's not my forte. <laughs> that's Deborah's forte. <laughs> that's Deborah's forte. That's Deborah's forte. Uh, okay. So here are here were our um, let's revisit the workshop goals. So. We said we're going to learn what our vision is and how essential it is. So, did we learn you know, what is a vision and how essential is it? What would you say about that? The why. It's the why. Yeah. The reason behind everything you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And the difference is between a vision and a mission. Why versus how. The how. The how. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the role that the mission plays. How you're gonna get there. And then the core values. What are core values and or guiding principles? The basis for everything we do. They're the roots. And then we they feed everything else. Absolutely. And um, how important is the vision, mission, and values to a strategic plan? Yeah. Critical. You can't do it without that. So um, remember I said in the beginning there were three things. Um, so how, with whatever you came to really focus on today, your chorus, your committee, your quartet, um, the main one, how many feel that their, their um, organization is in a solid place with the vision and mission? How many realize this is something you really need to work on? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair. Fair. Mm, communicating it better. Yeah, that's great. And then how many realize this might be time to revisit some of these questions again? Yeah, that's good. So let me leave you with one last um, thought. One last quote. Are you working? You're not working. I dropped it. Okay, we'll do it this way. It's a Japanese proverb, which I just love. Vision without action is a daydream. Keep going. <laughs> action without vision is a nightmare. Because <laughs> you don't have any foundation to it. But glorious vision combined with decisive action can change the world. Absolutely. Yeah. We found some good quotes. Thanks. So it's a Japanese quote. So thank you. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I know there's so much more, but and I hope you feel energized a little bit and feel like you connected more to the people in this room. And I just thank you for letting me do this. Thank you. Oh.